Oh, you fool. You poor, helpless soul. You actually clicked on the video. In your starved search for the twisted and vile, don't you realize that the price for searching and finding such twisted ideas was in fact your very soul? Are you one of those types of anime fans who are looking for the darkest anime which are out there, but sadly, you're unable to find any because you've already seen them all? Well, then today's video is probably just for you. Because today I'm going to tell you about the top 10 darkest anime you probably haven't seen yet. So let's stop wasting our time and jump right into the goddamn video. Coming in at number 10 is Happy Sugar Life. The story of a high school girl who falls in love with another high school girl. Ah. That sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? But just how much does she love her? Well, uh, pretty much with all her heart, I would say. Despite her innocent appearance, this girl is willing to do anything to protect her beloved, even going to extreme measures to ensure that their happy sugar life remains intact. Happy Sugar Life is a psychological horror about normal people being pushed to their limits. The story is pretty dark, or to put it in simple terms, it is not a happy sugar life. It is a psychological horror that keeps you asking, is this really okay? Are we the baddies? Or why am I rooting for this person? Even though there is never really that much on-screen violence, the story covers up for it. Dark themes are thoroughly explored, which is not really that common in some anime. All of the characters in the show are looking for their happy sugar life. Yet they don't see that by searching for this happiness, they keep on leaving despair behind them. And once they find their so-called ideal life, they are confused as to why they are not happy. Coming in at number 9 is Cassette no Shozo. The story of the Japanese art student who works in an antique shop. One day out of nowhere, he sees a beautiful doll-like girl trapped in an antique glass that his uncle bought in France. She seems to be living in another world that is contained entirely in glass. After that, her image refuses to leave the dude's mind and he gets obsessed with her. If all this crap happened to me, leave being obsessed, I had to visit a psychiatrist. But when a mysterious Italian artist recognizes a picture of the girl drawn by the main character, he learns her name is Cassette and that she was tragically murdered along with the rest of her family. And one night, after he closes her shop, the girl finally talks to him. What happens after that? Well. You'll have to watch it to find out. Now, if you haven't guessed it, this is a horror show. There are a lot of ways to frighten people and therefore, there are a lot of ways to execute horror. And it is what this show does perfectly. Even if you don't really care about the story, you cannot overlook the exceptional atmosphere this show creates. You get spooked, you get hooked. The definition of successful horror. So if you're interested in this type of show, maybe you should give this one a try. Then at number 8 we have Talentless Nana. After horrific creatures suddenly appeared around the world, teenagers were gifted with supernatural abilities called talents. To train their powers, an academy was established on a secluded island. However, our main character Nana is quite different from the others on the island. He has no talent. With many talented teenagers around him, he is often a target for bullying. But even so, he still strives to complete his training. But just as everyone starts blending in as comrades in arms, mysterious disappearances begin to threaten the class's entire foundation. This only reinforces that pink-haired yandere full of psychological thriller-filled characters are here to stay. And they certainly aren't dumb. And that's the case of female main character Nana Hiragi. Being sent from the human side to an anime-like version of Hogwarts, a concealed island filled with generic superheroes who look like they were part of My Hero Academia, you might think that she is just dumb to plainly follow orders. But throughout the show, you understand that that's not quite so. I'm not going to tell you whether Talentless Nana is a good or a bad show, because it depends on your taste. It's either that you love or hate the unrealistic ways of the show. And regardless of that, there's an insane amount of plot twists and cliffhangers that left you wanting more. So if you are one of those who prefer these, go and watch it. Next at number 7 we have Red Garden. The story starts off in New York where strange suicides have been taking place. And one day, four girls from the same high school woke up one morning, feeling tired and dizzy, and not able to remember anything about the previous night. In school, they find out that one of their classmates has committed suicide. School is cancelled for the rest of the day, 
but instead of going home, the girls are drawn to a park by butterflies that only they can strangely see. There, a man and a woman suddenly approach the girls, telling them that they all died the previous night. As the plot suggests, Red Garden is a creepy horror story starring four girls, or precisely, four dead girls. Even though they are dead, they have been granted life by a woman in exchange for fighting all kinds of unnatural beings anytime, anywhere. Along with trying to live a normal life, they are also trying to figure out what happened to them that night, where their normal lives ended. And all of this is just the beginning. So, if you're searching for a proper horror mystery, this may be the one for you. Coming in number 6 is Le Chevalier Dion. The story is based in 18th century Paris. There, our main character Dion finds his sister brutally murdered. After that, he decides to find her killer. Therefore, he joins the secret police hoping to catch the culprit. But during the case, he gets possessed by the vengeful spirit of his sister, turning the story into a supernatural horror mystery. Though some of you may call the show old-fashioned, Le Chevalier Dion was immensely pretty from the get-go. Production IG, the animation company went all out on the production. Apart from that, the plot was originally well-researched and envisioned in amazing depth and complexity. However, this all seemed wasted in pacing and characterization. In short, despite having a great plot for a long time, the show tried to hook its watchers with a bunch of boring talking, a lack of intensity, and characters that were largely hard to connect with. And were it not for the eventual growth of the other cast members, the show would have been hard to finish. Apart from all this, the show ends on a high note, leaving us wanting for more. So, if you are searching for something like this, you may give it a try. You won't regret it. At number 5 we have Ongo. Comforting lies or the bitter truth? Which is better in your opinion? This question is perhaps one of the most common ones in all of anime. Many stories that tackle it end up siding with the truth, only to end up softening the blow through all sorts of planning, making the bitterness of the truth not as bad as initially expected. But this one's quite different. In a dystopian future, our main character, also known by some as the defeated detective, solves mysteries throughout Tokyo. Aided by his odd sidekick, the main character's obsession with cracking cases, particularly homicides, lead to numerous mysteries solved and culprits caught. However, his partner seems to have some other, more sinister intentions for the people they catch, and the truth of the assistant's identity and motivation is shrouded in secrecy. If you're expecting a supernatural horror anime, look elsewhere. The supernatural aspects of this show are kept to a bare minimum. In fact, there are only two supernatural aspects of the show. One being the nature of the so-called sidekick, and the other is little more than a magic tool. Other than these two anomalies, Ungo has more in common with the science fiction genre. It has amazing futuristic technology and hints of a dystopian future. And it even poses the question of how far can artificial intelligence evolve by itself and whether or not it is even right to treat them as machines at that point. So looking for this type of show? Try this one out. Next up at number four is Metropolis. No, I'm not talking about the city with Superman, but rather a futuristic city in which humans and robots live together but unrest and violence increase with each new day. Searching for a criminal scientist, two detectives arrive in the city. But rather than the scientist himself, the detectives encounter a girl who has no memories of her past and for some reason is being chased by the ruler of the city himself. What happens next? Well, go and watch it. In a sci-fi world where humans and robots live together, although this theme of robots against humanity is an often used plot device, it works really well in the movie and is not even the main plot. It was written by the mangaka and director of Akira, and this movie surely lives up to the hype. The story is well written and easily hooks the viewers, but how you will feel about this movie depends on you and you alone. Because this is a type of movie that after watching, each viewer will reason their way through the plot and its loaded questions and metaphors. But if you still want to know the opinion of a nerd like me, then stop wasting your time and go watch it. At number three, we have Aoi Bungaku. One thing I have learned after finishing the series is that the world and its society is one cruel place full of violence, madness, and betrayal. If you have never heard of the show, no need to be ashamed. It is not a well-known series at all. Thanks to all the rating platforms, Aoi Bungaku is basically a compilation of stories taken from classic Japanese literature. 
the most famous of the stories, is no longer human, which is covered in episode 1 through 4, and the story is about a tortured young artist who as a child was sexually abused by his maid and emotionally abused by his politician father. As a result, the narrator feels detached from society and never reveals his true emotions to others. He wears a mask until he becomes hollow and dead inside and no longer considers himself human. He meets a girl who is also suffering from great sadness and they decide to commit suicide together. The girl dies during the suicide, but the narrator survives. Talk about bad luck. After that, he is haunted by guilt. He attempts to live as a normal human, but the guilt always follows him. When he finally meets another woman that basically makes him feel normal, he discovers that she has been sleeping with his boss to keep him employed. So if you ever feel you are unlucky, remember that this character exists, and so does this series. At number two, we have From the New World. The story takes place in Japan a thousand years from the present in a utopia where a portion of the population retains a special power called psychokinesis. From the beginning, we follow a group of five children as they grow up in the anime and see how they develop within a community bound by strict rules and deal with the decisions they make that alter the course of their lives and the entire society that they live in. The plot of the show flows very nicely from episode to episode and just as we approach the climax, there's a plot twist. And the storyline from that point just flips upside down in a way you would never even expect it to. Be it psychopaths, ergo proxy, or textualize, the average viewer is likely to have seen these high-tech interpretations of future societies. But this series setting is quite different. At first glance, it is hard to see it as a show of that type of genre, but it is. And an exceptionally remarkable one indeed. So no need to think twice. Go and watch it. But at number one is Rainbow. Now, don't get the wrong idea from the name. It is in no way as beautiful or peaceful as a rainbow. The show takes place in Japan in 1955. The main character has just arrived at special reform school along with five other teenagers who have been arrested on serious criminal charges. They are all assigned to the same cell where they meet an older inmate who is a former boxer, with whom all six of them form a strong bond. They promise to meet outside after completing their sentences, and with that, the seven cellmates struggle together against the brutal suffering and humiliation inflicted upon them by a sadistic guard and a doctor who takes pleasure in violating boys. Facing such hellish conditions, the seven inmates can do nothing but survive until their sentences are up. But even if they do, just what kind of lives are waiting for them on the other side? After finishing episode one of the series, I took a deep breath. And after finishing the series, I was finally able to exhale. I was so hooked that I had apparently forgotten to breathe while watching. This series was a rush of nonstop emotion all the way through and never hesitated for a second. What exactly is friendship? Are your friends more important to you than your family? What are you willing to go through for a friend? Rainbow is brutal, mature, and dark. So, this show is definitely one of the darkest shows you will ever see. If you want to, that is. Alright, I guess that's it for today. Before you leave, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. It really means a lot to me. And again, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press on that bell icon. And set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And also, be sure to leave a comment on which anime you have already watched from this list, or if there's any that you want to add to it. Again, this is just my list. I might have forgotten to add some anime to it, so if there is any, please let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to check it out. And if there's a lot of them, then who knows? There might be a separate video for those as well. But as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.